Jake the Film Guy, microbudgeter.com. In this video, we're gonna talk about what to do when your prospective client treats you like a noob. The very first thing you need to do is be like the old veterans who stormed the beaches of Normandy. Have some grit in your bones, lads and lasses. What do I mean by this? There was once a phone call I had with a reference. Now this reference was very willing to entertain this phone call on behalf of the person I was looking to subcontract for my short film powers and principalities. This reference, however, was very type A. Now, if you go by the disc profile, this means that they are extremely red on that chart. If you go by the flag test, that means they're from the D dominant country. This person, you know who I'm talking about, loves to talk, loves to bulldoze if you're not careful. Now, I was just trying to get some feedback on this potential subcontractor, but nonetheless, I couldn't get two words in. This person kept cutting me off. If you don't stand your ground in these conversations where it doesn't matter, you probably won't stand your ground because you won't have that practice, that grit built up to stand your ground in the conversations where it does matter. So in this particular instance, I had to interrupt the guy and I said, why are you interrupting me? He was shocked by it. Probably not very often, excuse me, that people try to take him to task there. If you find yourself getting bulldozed, stand up for yourself. Be like the old veterans that stormed the beaches of Normandy. My grandfather lived in this town west of Ocala in Florida called Dunellen. It was a small town and he said, lovingly, that there were some old veterans, he himself a Korean conflict veteran, but there were some old World War II veterans that would come into the Mickey D's and shout over everything going on at each other about their time storming the beach. Be like those guys. It commands the attention. I'm not saying you need to be a turd. You don't need to be without tact. All right, number two. It's going to get crazy here. We're going to break it up in several sections. So hang in there. You need to understand the video production sales cycle. Every product, every service has a sales cycle attached to it. Ours is not very different from a lot of other services, but if you don't understand it, you can't control the conversation and therefore you will be treated like a noob. The very first thing you need to do is qualify that person you were talking to. I have a lot of information at the site. Obviously you can go to YouTube if you're tired of my mug and you can find out information about how to qualify people. I also recommend that you invest some time in learning sales training every working day. You can go to the old school generation from the greatest generation ever, Zig Ziglar, or you can go to somebody more contemporary Grant Cardone. Now, Grant Cardone might be a little rough around the edges, but nonetheless, even in the Old Testament, you see examples of people that are rough around the edges that God still uses for his purpose. And I believe that there is truth still being shared in what Grant teaches. So learn from somebody that you enjoy learning from about sales. It will not just benefit you as a video producer, but if we're going to make it as filmmakers and tell stories of the one true hope of the world, well, we need to learn how to cast big visions and then close people on those visions. Pitching. This is a skill set that we must all work on and it starts with qualifying somebody. Are they the right person to make the call? Are they the person that is responsible for writing the check? You need to figure out this information. I have more on how to do that elsewhere. We'll talk about that in those videos and in those texts. So go there now. Number two, you need to then make sure that you are talking about what it is they want. Don't come to them with X when they want Y. Figure out what Y is. You can offer some flavoring of X, but you need to ultimately have a vision that's more closer to what they want, not what you want. After all, you are in video production. It is a service to someone else. Number three, you need to talk deadlines. Hang with me, there are six deadlines you need to be discussing with your client. And if you ignore these, you're going to get hosed. The first one is you need to discuss when the script will be finished and when no further additions, revisions, anything along those lines can be made. I once had a client in Vegas and she wanted to have a hospital scene in her video. And this came after the fact when production had wrapped. But whose fault was that? Mine, because I rushed the script along. I did get her okay on it, but I didn't double check with her. And if you don't double check on any of these things, whether it's at work, whether it's your video production job, your business, it doesn't matter. If you don't double check, whose fault is that? Yours. If you're going to lead, then you need to take responsibility. So always double check everything. I didn't do that. So the fault was mine. We didn't get the hospital shot, but it could have been caught at that point. So discuss that first deadline of when the script will be done, because once pre-production can wrap, then you can start production, which is the next deadline. When does production start? You also need to discuss when will production conclude? Maybe it's the same day shoot. That's great, but don't assume these things from the get-go. Spell these six deadlines out. I've given you three, that means we have three more. You need to discuss when they're going to have 
Plus production begin. I once had Christmas coming up and I had just completed a bunch of videos for a client. I didn't spell this out. The client was upset. When he saw me in that interim between Christmas and New Year's at an unrelated party, he said, listen, you just need to explain to people you've been in business longer than I have. It's okay that you tell them I'm gonna be spending time with families over the holidays. This work will get started in January, but don't just leave me hanging. It was good advice, it was tough love, I needed it, and you need to remember that too. You need to spell out to your person when post-production will begin. When does the edits begin? Which will then bring you to the final two deadlines you need to discuss with your clients. When do they get a first draft and when do they get a final draft? So if you're keeping count here, that's when they will get to see the first draft and when they will get to see the final draft, when they will collect that final draft. So first look at the first draft and then everything's buttoned up, everything's done. They get delivery of the final draft. Those six deadlines need to be in writing and they need to at least initial by all of those because without that mutual understanding, you can have some waves. You can have a lost client. You could have a nasty review. You know what I'm saying? So just to number four, you need to make sure you have signatures from a decision maker, at least one on the contract, the work agreement, even if it's just an invoice that you're going to be billing them for X hours of work at this rate. You need a signature before you begin the work. Worst case scenario, sit on the footage that you might be collecting for them. If you're going to be doing just an editing job, then you really need to heed this advice and heed it well. Get a decision maker's signature. So in that controlling of the video production sales cycle, you need to make sure that that control ends with a signature. Otherwise the work doesn't begin. You need to be very clear about that. I did a job once, I was at the Rio Hotel, it was a convention and I was gonna go around and get footage of the convention as it was happening. The decision maker, the video production house that contracted me to do the job, well, he didn't sign the invoice that I sent. Thank you, Siri, it's 11 o'clock. The contractor did not sign my invoice. I sat on the footage, which was okay. I ultimately got paid what I was owed. But I burned a bridge, they burned a bridge. We didn't work together ever again because there was, and this is my fault for not getting that signature in the first place, there was a missed opportunity to have open and transparent communication about expectations. You will lose clients, you will lose jobs, you will get dinged if you do not have this signature in place. Don't leap at the prospect of an opportunity when you don't have the assurance of the decision maker's handwritten signature on that opportunity to begin with. That leads me to our fourth and final point. To avoid being treated like a noob, you need to smile. Smile often. Be frequent about it. There's a guy on staff that I work with. He smiles all the time, even when he's delivering bad news. He has practiced it, and he's very good about it. Smiling is disarming. We like seeing a smiling face. Even when a client is chewing you out, even when a client is trying to bamboozle you, smile. Always smile. I promise you, it will do wonders for you. If you find this information useful, I want you to do something for me. I want you to go and promise me that you will turn down the low paying job. I want you to promise me that you will smile often. I want you to promise me that you will control the sales cycle. And I want you to promise me you will stand your ground when you're getting bulldozed or you are almost getting bulldozed by that dominant personality type. Be as dominant. Be like the veterans that stormed the beaches of Normandy and go with God. God bless you all. I will see you on the next video.